in order to be able to stay in that high level position as much as possible, you have to be able to pass off some of those nitty gritty things that you can potentially outsource either now or create and have a plan for outsourcing in the future when your business allows. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Let's talk efficiency. We all love it. It's a hot topic on this show, and it's something that I frankly love studying. But lately, I've been studying efficiency for totally different reasons. Not so that I can save time just to spend it more on work, but to claim back my time and use it for more precious things. Time with my family, middle of the day rest when both girls are miraculously sleeping, reading just for the sake of reading and fun. Now, over the last couple of years, I've been really leaning into this anti-hustle culture. In fact, I'd argue that I started talking about building a business that supports your life and not building a business that takes over your life eons ago. For so long, it was cool to work yourself around the clock and to never take breaks. And somehow our culture ran with that notion and this idea of busyness becoming a source of pride and this badge of honor for so many people was the name of the game. We as a society began to believe that rest was equivalent to being lazy. And if your calendar wasn't jam packed, well, then you were wasting your time. I hope that now, after so many people have experienced burnout, that we realize the immense value of rest and margin and using our time wisely so that we can have more of it just to be. And when I say using your time wisely, I don't mean meticulously planning and filling every minute of your day with productivity from the time that you wake up to the time your head hits the pillow. Instead, I mean prioritizing what is most important to spend your precious time on, whether that's work or play or family or rest or recreation, because all of these things are important and valid and worthy of your time. And if time is life and we want to live full lives, well, then we need to be the keepers of our time and how we're spending it. So today we're going to talk about 14 ways to maximize your time when you are working so that you're able to fully unplug and relax and spend quality time with yourself or your loved ones whenever you're not on the clock. Are you ready? Let's dive on in. Being Boss Podcast, hosted by Emily Thompson, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network. Being Boss is an exploration of not only what it means, but what it takes to be boss as a creative business owner, freelancer, or side hustler. Being Boss is another amazing resource for anyone interested in getting inspired and more importantly, getting started. I'm so confident that if you love Gold Digger, you'll love Being Boss. Emily covers topics like releasing the sense of urgency in business, how to empower yourself at work and have a side hustle, and finding your passion and purpose in life using astrology. Listen to Being Boss wherever you get your podcasts. Thoreau once said, it's not enough to be busy. So are the ants. The question is, what are we busy about? And that idea, that thought, it really hits home for me. When I started my business, I was working full-time in my corporate position on top of planning a wedding and commuting an hour to work each day and training for a marathon. To say I was stretched thin would be an understatement. I was stressed. I was busy. I was doing all the things. Because of everything that was happening in my world, I did not have a ton of extra time to devote to starting and growing my business. So every spare hour I could scrounge up went into building something that would get me my life back. Now, when I look back, I literally have no clue how I managed it all. But at the time, I knew that the sacrifice of working pretty much around the clock in that specific season was going to be worth it. Did I work all the time? Yes. Was it worth it looking back? Yes. Was it sustainable? No, absolutely not. Now, when it comes to hustling, I think that there are seasons where it's appropriate and maybe even necessary to push the gas pedal down and get running. But I also want to preach that working that way only works in short bursts. 
it's not sustainable and it's usually not life giving. And you have to proceed with caution in order to avoid burnout. These are all things I've learned the hard way in my decade of entrepreneurship. I mean, there are bound to be these phases, these seasons of our lives and stages in our business that are busier than others. But if we recognize that off the bat, we can do our best to set ourselves up to feel even incrementally less frantic and frazzled by preparing the things that we can, setting up systems that give us back some of our time, and being totally and brutally honest about what we need in order to get through the busy while avoiding the burnout. All of these things are going to help us transition more quickly into a smoother, more balanced way of living and working. Now, I'm literally walking through that this year with launching my book. It's going to be busier than I've been in the last four years and things might get crazy, but I am doing literally everything in my power to anticipate what needs to happen, to prepare what I can prepare in advance, and to stick to my values when things try to pull me out of my life. Speaking of life, it took a lot of living to figure all of this out. And here's the thing. I'm speaking from this place of here's what I've learned so far. I will undoubtedly learn more lessons on this topic as I grow and evolve. But heck, these experiences shaped how I look at things like time and efficiency. And I'm going to guess that you have your own personal stories too. For me personally, motherhood was a massive catalyst and it helped me shift the way that I look at my time. My mom recently told me that her and my dad were slightly nervous to watch me become a mom, not because they doubted that I'd be a good one, but for so many years, I worked so hard. Like work was my baby and so much of my time went into my work. I went through this big transitory period after having Coco and realizing that my time was more precious than ever and my time was now split. Like I'll admit that I didn't exactly have the most mindful and balanced approach to work pre-kids. Today, things look totally different than they did years ago. I mean, for me, it was fun to work. Like I was in love with my work. So many days I find myself jumping online any hour of the day or night if inspiration struck or if I felt a tug of energy to get stuff done. I was the queen of like one more email, one more post, one more thing. So when I became a mom, I went from working full time to working really part time. And instead of working around the clock, I found myself basically working after Coco went to bed those first several months and even years. This was a massive, a massive transition for me. And I know that I'm not alone in that. There are so many nap time work warriors or side hustlers listening who want to be able to get a lot done without a clear chunk of time or cutting work time in half without impacting their results dramatically. Our situations all look different, but we can all agree that if we are able to do focused work in less time, we will have more time for the things that we love, the things we're passionate about. So maybe you're in this season where you're working full-time and building a side hustle whenever time allows, or perhaps you're in the season of parenthood and working whenever your cute little sidekick lets you log in for a little bit of time. Whatever your story is, I want to share some massively helpful tactical actions that you can take one at a time to free up more of your time so that you can actually focus on what matters, whether that's finishing a project or rocking your baby during nap time. This list may be somewhat longish, but don't let that keep you frozen. Just pick one or two things today to work on in the next week or so, and then come on back to this episode or even visit the show notes at jennacutcherblog.com slash less time. That's jennacutcherblog.com slash less time to work on a few more once you're done. Before you know it, you'll have more margin in your day to spend however you'd like, and you won't have to waste time on repeating tasks or doing things that aren't actually productive or worthwhile. So without further ado, let's jump on in. First, we want to start with working smarter with the time that you do have. So that means building out a few things that will take time on the front end, but save you massive amounts of time later on. Now, trust me when I say time passes anyway, so this upfront work is going to be worth it. So first, you can create email templates for anything that you find yourself writing more than once. It can be a new client inquiry responses, frequently asked questions in your inbox, a follow-up email, or literally anything that you type out from scratch all the time. Bonus thought is that you likely have an email in your inbox that you can take and just tweak and save in a Google Doc as your future template. Now, templates are life. Like imagine the feeling of creating one thoughtful or intentional email and using it over and over and over again without the thought or time needed. So first, start with email templates. Next, 
Create an autoresponder that sets clear expectations and buys you some time. Autoresponders can absolutely change the game. Let recipients know in the message when they can expect to hear back from you, whether it's within three business days or 10. And remember to under promise and over deliver here. On top of that, what you can do in your autoresponder is share links to things that they might need in the meantime. You can link up resources, an application to work with you, your products, your pricing guide, or anything else that someone might be looking for. And if your email is constantly getting flooded with messages that you just can't prioritize responding to right now, it's totally okay to say that. Say something like, while we appreciate and love getting notes from the community at this point in time, we're working on some big projects for you and unfortunately can't respond to every email that comes in. If your note is urgent, we will get back to you within X business days. Otherwise, keep up with us on social media for announcements of what's to come. This allows you to set both expectations and boundaries using an autoresponder that will do the serving for you. And the best part is, is that you can set it and forget it. Number three, create a pricing guide that walks someone through the features of your offer and explains what your offer is and how much it costs so that you don't have to book tons of consults with people who might not be the right fit. A well thought out pricing guide can help someone qualify themselves as a potential client and can keep the awkward money discussions at a minimum because you're upfront and you're sharing what it is that they can expect. I know many photographers and designers have pricing guides, but honestly, I believe any service provider can and should have a pretty PDF that they can easily send to prospects that explains the package and the value of what someone will get if they work with you. You don't want to waste anyone's time, so being transparent with your pricing can save you time and build trust. I know some people say don't list your prices, but I always included a starting at with a price point because it just helps people see if they're even in the ballpark of if they can afford you or not. So I think the more transparent you can be with pricing, the more time you're going to save yourself and potential clients. Number four. Begin to create regular content that serves, explains, and teaches to build up a library of resources you can direct people to about your offer. My blog, this podcast, massive resource libraries that we point people to daily, those can save you a ton of time. And while you don't need to have thousands of blog posts or hundreds of podcast episodes, creating a few key content pieces that can serve as resources can massively help you. It can literally be like one blog post a month that leads someone to more information or even an Instagram caption that teaches something that you can then send to people asking about certain topics. A quick way to get started with this is to look back on old content that you might have already created and see ways that you can expand and repurpose it in a fresh way. Or even ask your audience, what questions do you have and build content around that? Creating a little library of resources can help you direct people in the right place without asking you to repeat yourself like a broken record. Create once, serve more than once. Number five is this, build a website or even just a solid landing page that shares more about you, your business, your offers, and your pricing so that you can have a place that's searchable and that does a lot of the question answering and pitching for you. You want to have some sort of home base on the web. Not only does it help you build credibility, but it provides searchability and it allows for people to qualify themselves as a potential fit for your offer. Now, obviously, this is a larger undertaking, but if you sign up for something like Flowdesk for email marketing or for Kajabi to create courses, platforms like those provide the ability to build out websites or landing pages within their platform so that you can get your info live quickly. To check out my favorites, head to jkfaves.com. That's J-K-F-A-V-E-S.com. And I list out all of my favorite places and resources to help you get started along with discount codes that'll allow you to save. Doing good isn't only good for those around us. It's also good for business. We've seen it time and time again. Companies with solid mission statements grow stronger with their customers, employee retention, and their bottom line. Whatever your mission is, HubSpot is on a mission to help your business grow better with a CRM platform that grows with you. HubSpot's easy-to-use website builder helps you create, manage, and update your business's unique online presence so you can get your mission out to the world quickly and easily. Plus, with seamless plugins that help you track customer activity, you'll know what's clicking and who's not, all from your HubSpot dashboard. Get started and get going for good with HubSpot. Learn how your business can grow better at HubSpot.com. 
You're already so close to having everything you need to transform your ideas, those little sparks into your brain, into something real. Far too many good dreams die before they've had the chance to grow. Fear stomps them out. Lack of planning keeps them quiet. And we're committed to changing that today. Are you ready? My Gold Digger Printable Planner is here to help you map out every plan, list, tracker, and prompt that you need in order to achieve your personal goals, your business dreams, or your wellness vision. Whatever your ideas are, you are equipped to plan and play. Snag the Gold Digger Planner at jennacutcher.com slash Planner for the resources to get that dream down on paper so that it can finally grow. That's jennacutcher.com slash Planner. Number six, have a hub for your transaction. So this is an absolute life changer, but having a system or a CRM, which is a customer relationship manager, some sort of simple way that you can send contracts, collect invoices easily and coordinate sales and client interactions online can be life-changing. Everything can be stored and tracked in one place. And this is going to keep all of your important payment information and correspondences in one place, which makes it easier and faster to interact. And here's the thing. When you have a solid CRM, you don't have to deal with things like snail mail or have a bunch of separate platforms for managing various backend tasks. A lot of times these systems can save you time on things like taxes and they can do things like automatic follow-up for things like payment and save you time and streamline your workflows. I used to do everything with filing cabinets. In fact, I just found one of my old filing cabinets with contracts from years ago and I would have to go to the post office and snail mail things over and go to the bank and cash checks. And then I decided to join a program called HoneyBook. And it was an absolute game changer for all things like contracts and invoices and workflows. So if you want to look for one or if you want to see what I'm using, go to jennacutcher.com slash HoneyBook and you can check out how HoneyBook works and how I use it in my business. And the best part is, is you can save 50% off on your annual subscription. Again, that is jennacutcher.com slash HoneyBook. Okay, so after you have all of these pieces in place, now let's talk about how you can work on more of the day-to-day time-saving actions. So all of the things I just listed from email templates to autoresponders, you can build those once, set them up, and have them working for you. So start with those pieces of the puzzle first, but next I'm gonna give you some tips for how you can save time in your day-to-day life. So number seven is this. Change your daily approach to work and incorporate something called a big three. So a big three is essentially establishing your big three tasks, or even if you just have a limited amount of time, figuring out what is the number one thing that I need to get done today. Now, this is basically just defining the action steps or the task that needs to be completed that will make the most significant difference or make the biggest impact in your business or your life. Now, when you are strapped for time, it is so easy to feel like you do not get anything done. Like, have you ever worked your butt off and you finish the day and you're like, what did I even accomplish today? I feel like I was working so hard and nothing got done. Or maybe you think like the work I did didn't actually even make a difference. If you can get really good at looking at your list and starting with the one thing that can actually be tied to a tangible result versus things like social media or getting sucked into your inbox. You can then finish your day feeling accomplished and knowing that you did something that made the needle move. So start off your day, look at your task list, start off with the one or the three things that must get done for that day. And then if and when you have that extra time, you can use it to tackle the rest of the things on your list or better yet, you can use it to rest. Number eight, using a project management system and breaking down a big task into a bunch of smaller ones. Now, this is something that became a necessity for me after having Coco. I literally found myself logging into work and not even knowing what I needed to get done. So having a project management system, not just for myself, but for my entire team, absolutely was a game changer. Now, we use a program called Monday for project management. And basically what it does is it allows us to look at big picture projects and break them down into way smaller digestible pieces. I can not only look at my own to-do list and check things off, but follow projects my team is working on. And it keeps everything in one place. Everything is in one home. So it gives you this like satisfaction of checking off things as you do them. But it also allows you to mentally release tasks that are taking up brain space since you know you have everything safely stored in one spot. 
You can create tasks. You can mark them off. You can set deadlines, reminders. There are so many different ways that you can use Monday. And it has been just life-changing for me and my team. So taking the time to break down a big project into micro tasks is going to help you move forward. And it doesn't leave you feeling like you have unfinished business. Like for me in this stage of life, I need to know that I close the loop on certain things just to be able to mentally disconnect from work and get back into living. And so if you want to check out what we use, head to jennalovesmonday.com. That's jennalovesmonday.com. And we absolutely love it as a project management system. And I know it can be tempting to think, I don't have a team. I don't need something like this. Trust me, if you can start using a system like this when you are a solopreneur, it's going to help for you to break down these big projects and create systems and workflows that are going to serve you long after today. Next up is number nine cutting out the unnecessaries or the least to haves to focus on the need to haves. Think about this in terms of things like content or frequency of posting or sharing or outreach. You want to start super simple and then expand your efforts once you get the flow or the hang of it. There's no point in shooting too big or being unrealistic and then feeling guilt or shame when you can't follow through. I know I've done this before as an entrepreneur. And so maybe it's most realistic for your time and needs to start small. You're saying, I'm going to send one email to my email list a month and then work your way up to more later on as you get the flow, as you know how long things are going to take you, as you figure out your own system. So look at how you can really make sure that you're doing the things that make you an actual business, aka you're making money, you're making sales, you're serving clients, and not just focusing on things that make you look like a business, aka social media or a perfect website. Focus on the needle movers first and be brutal in cutting out anything that really isn't tied to an actual result. Number 10, getting help, whether it's a contractor like a VA or hiring someone short term for a one off project on a site like Fiverr. Now, I personally used to absolutely suck at asking for help, but over the years, I've realized that in order to do the things that I do and also be the kind of mom I want to be, help is essential, it's required. Hiring my integrator, Marissa, three years ago actually came out of my frustration of trying to navigate naptime warrior life after Coco was born and essentially not having the bandwidth to even know what needed to get done or where to start. Like, I felt like I was wasting the precious time that I did have just to get reacclimated to the business. I was busy answering everyone else's questions and figuring out what needed to be done and responding to emails. And I would literally just like sit down and stare at all the needs and requests from my team and then look at what big projects or launches were coming up. And I just felt frozen. I like literally didn't know where to start or how to dig myself out. When I realized that I am the visionary and not the integrator, when I hired someone to be the integrator, to integrate, to manage the team, to handle the requests, like everything changed. I knew that if someone else could manage that prioritization, that I could stay in my lane of getting things done that were needed for me and check them off so much faster. So maybe it's not an integrator for you. Maybe you need help with your inbox or you need someone to help you set up your schedule or you need help cleaning your house. Whatever that is, look at ways that you can get help and earn back the expense of hiring that help. Number 11 is getting crystal clear on the things that only you can do. And this one is tricky because a lot of us start as solopreneurs. We learn how to do all the things. Yes, I can edit a podcast episode and I can create graphics and I can design web pages, but just because I can or I've done those things doesn't mean that I should be still doing them. There are actually very few things that only I can do. And I hinted at this in the last one, but if you are likely the visionary, which you probably are, you are maybe the voice and probably the face of your brand too. And so in order to be able to stay in that high level position as much as possible, you have to be able to pass off some of those nitty gritty things that you can potentially outsource either now or create and have a plan for outsourcing in the future when your business allows. So start with the things that only you can do first, because those are usually the things that are the most important as the business owner. Number 12 is tying every effort that you're doing to real tangible results. Now, chances are a lot of the work that you're doing might not actually be moving the needle in a measurable way. We want to look at ROI, your return on investment, with your investment being your time, your money, and your energy. Anytime you are spending one of these, you want to be able to tie it to something tangible. So how do we do this? 
This is going to require a more bird's eye look at the business. And honestly, it's just so important to do a little inventory or do a time audit once or twice a year to make sure you're not just on autopilot or you're spinning your wheels anywhere. You want to be able to ensure that every single effort that you're putting into your business is actually reaping some kind of reward. So sit down, write down your tasks, your projects, your launches, your action items, and then next to each one, write down the benefit or the direct results that it brings to the business. So for example, one of our ongoing tasks is putting out podcast episodes just like these ones. And this is obviously a free service and a resource that we offer up to anyone. But if we're looking at it strategically, yes, we're creating free content, but we can also use that free content and tie it to a real result, whether we're promoting a launch or sharing a freebie that someone can opt into or talking about an affiliate that we use and love. If you realize somewhere that you're spending time on isn't actually moving the needle anywhere, it might be time for you to pivot to re-strategize, or to maybe take that item off of your list for a little while to save you some of your precious time. All right, number 13 is getting in solid focused work. This is a massive struggle for me right now in my life. Set a timer for 20 minutes or use an hourglass timer to tackle something that you've been putting off or just set a timer to help you focus. Like Truth Corner, I literally need this a lot. I'm thinking right now, okay, after this episode, I should flip over my 20-minute timer and let the hourglass run while I put away my clothes. I have this pile of clothes that has been sitting on my dresser for a week. And I know if I just gave 20 minutes, I could tidy up my entire closet something I'm going to do after this episode. But I am someone, I'm fairly certain that I have ADHD and I really struggle with actually focusing on my work, which is super tricky. And it's so frustrating when you only have a small amount of time to actually do the work. So trying to get distraction-free work done is really important for me. And so I usually do shorter increments, like 20 minutes. And then when the timer is done, I'll walk around or I'll take deep breaths or I'll do five minutes of outdoor time before I restart and jump back in. So try to do focus work, repeat these short work spurts for as long as you are given to work. And you might be amazed at how much you can get done. I literally have to like put my phone in a box or set a timer or step away from my current environment to focus on something new. And so if that is you as well, make sure that you are getting in solid focused work time. All right. Number 14. And finally, changing the way that you create. So if you listen to this show, you know that I would literally kiss the idea of batch working if that were a possible thing. Batch working is focusing on one category of work without having to reacclimate yourself and change directions every 20 to 30 minutes. So we just talked about focused work, but what if we got hyper-focused and worked on one specific thing? So whether you have an hour or three hours, try to prioritize and plan out your schedule so that you can work on one task and get as far as you can, whether it's sitting down and writing out a batch of emails for your email list or making a batch of social media posts or recording a batch of podcast episodes. This type of work allows you to focus in, but it also helps for you to see the bigger strategy because you're not just creating one-off content, but you're able to look at things like the flow, the sequence, the strategy. And as a bonus, The more that you can do this and then schedule ahead, the less urgency you feel about things, giving you way more peace and flexibility with the time that you do have. Elizabeth Knox, the author of a book called Work Reimagined, said, research shows that it takes longer to complete tasks. If you keep switching between them, you're going to make more mistakes. You're going to burn out faster and lose up to 40% of productivity. So if you take anything away from this episode and you want to save time and get more done in less time, start with these last two ones, focused work and batch working, and let that become your number one and two priorities in your business. All right, guys, we made it through 14. And I know that that feels like a lot, but these are all micro and macro things that we've implemented into my business and into our systems over the past three years. Now, as I navigate this season as a mom of two, my goal truly is to work part-time so that I can spend more time with my family. And the best way that I can do that is through figuring out and leaning on what I just shared with you so that I can be working smarter to save time that I can then spend with the ones that I love. Now, like most things that are rewarding in the long run, there is no magic switch that will let you get a bunch of your time back. 
So instead, I want your goal to be to start with small and consistent actions and have some planning in place so that you can set up systems that work with you instead of against you. By incorporating some or all of these actions into your daily routine, you're going to get hours of time back that allow you to work on the important work matters or spend time doing other non-work things that you love, which to me is a sign of a beautiful and a fulfilling life. Here's to managing our time well and preserving our peace as we go. You've got this. And of course, until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 